The Batmobile from the latest Batman film is probably my favorite so far. I love the realistic take on it, and it just feels like brute force. So I parked it in front of my office, because why not? Obviously, this is just a visual effect, but it's also one that is super easy and cheap to do since this is actually just a toy model. To get this convincingly into the scene, we turned this toy into a 3D model using photogrammetry. If you don't know, photogrammetry is the science of taking 2D images and processing them into a three-dimensional model. Most impressively seen from the Quixel team, their mega scans are incredible and free with an Epic Games account and Unreal Engine, which is also free. Of course, the Quixel team are pros with very expensive expensive gear getting that stuff done, but there are plenty of ways to do this yourself. We've shown it on the show in the past as well when we hit Josh with a car. Joey used the images of Josh we gathered to create a digital double for the effect, and Joey did something similar for a hilariously awesome 3D short he has on his own channel. Definitely check that out in the notes below. It's incredibly odd in the best kind of way. But as with everything, technology has been moving so fast that you can even do your own photo scans right now using the camera you carry around in your pocket. And not only that, use an app to to capture the process right there on your phone as well, which is how we captured the Batmobile model. The app I use is called Polycam, which is available for iPhone and Android. And in here, you have the option for LiDAR scans if you have a compatible iPhone or photo mode if you don't. LiDAR is great for capturing spaces. It uses depth data gathered by the LiDAR sensor to reconstruct that space. While photo mode is better for objects and gives you more detail and accuracy. So photo mode is what we're gonna be using today. And inside, of the photo mode, you have manual and auto. Auto will take the photos for you as you move around the subject. Manual leaves it up to you to snap each one. I prefer manual, so I have more control. After that, you get your subject, in this case, our Batmobile, which I connected to a tripod so that I could have some clearance to get underneath a bit, then took shots dead on going around 360. Then I got higher going around 360 again, then lower and got that 360 again. After that, I'll check my images and delete any that are blurred or not ideal in some other way, then I'll click done and move to our processing options. For detail, you have optimized, medium, full, and raw. The app gives you advice on which you should choose here, and since I want the AO, normal, and roughness map, I'll choose full. Then the app will upload and process your scans, and once done, you will have your model ready to download, which you can on the app or their website. So I'll go here, grab an OBJ, and I'm ready to go. Now what I ended up with wasn't my first go scanning the Batmobile. It took several times to get a good enough scan, mainly because of what I was scanning. It has some difficult shapes, not a lot of texture, and windows, so all of that is pretty challenging for any scan. So to get a really solid scan, it was a matter of waiting for the perfect light. We finally had a fully overcast day, so I ran out and grabbed it outside in that cloudy soft light, and it came out great. And while doing these, I got a general do's and don'ts checklist for myself when scanning. For the don'ts, don't have motion blur in your image, try not to have too much variation, in light as you move around, don't shoot reflective surfaces, and don't shoot in harsh light like direct sunlight. But do shoot non-glossy and well-textured things, shoot under soft, consistent light, stay manual for good consistency in all the things you can control, and depending on the object, get close shots for more detail in areas that are needed. For the Batmobile, I didn't get the closer detailed shots, but for all my other scans, it worked out great. But now that I have a solid scan, the next step is cleaning. I'm in Cinema 4D, but of course you can do this in Blender as well. Well, Blender has really excellent sculpting tools and is free, but I don't know it as well. But I'll link a tutorial on this for Blender down below. I'll bring my OBJ into Cinema 4D, then in points mode, I'll select the areas of the scan I don't want to keep and delete. Then I'll double click my texture, go to viewport and change texture preview size, and I'll shift that to no scaling so I can see the final look more correctly. If I jump to sculpting right now and say, start to smooth an area, this will start happening to my model. And that is because I need to make sure all all my polygons are connected. To do that, I'll go to points mode, select all, then go to mesh, remove, hit the gear next to optimize, then I'll change to 0 .005 and hit OK. So now I can sculpt without things separating. After that, I'll use the smooth tool, the grab tool, and others to clean this up a bit. And I'm not great at this side of it yet, so I'll put tutorials below that will walk you through that process better than I can. But now that I have a solid 3D model that feels pretty real since it is, getting it in the scene is crazy 
crazy simple. I just track the footage, place the model, then to light the scene, I'll drop in a dome light, add an HDRI that I took of the scene when we shot right here. After that, it's just some comp work and After Effects and some added motion blur to get it all glued together. It's shockingly easy once you get over that initial learning curve. For a more detailed tutorial on tracking and putting 3D objects in your scene, check out the episode that we did last year in the notes below. But with this general process done, we can scan and drop in anything that we want. And most things are going to scan 1000 times better than this Batmobile did. Non-reflective objects with more texture end up scanning shockingly well, like this skull statue. It retains so much of that detail that you can get very close and see that it works really great. But with my scene tracked and lit with the HDRI already, I can just drop it right in there, or this ET, or Bella Lugosi, or Josh. And I was surprised to see how much better Poly can process the same images that we use for our hit by a car episode. I really wish we would have used this one instead since it's so much cleaner and more realistic. Even if you scale, there's a lot of detail there and even more with the scan I did of Josh from the app. And this is all just a crazy amount of fun, grabbing and scanning whatever is lying around like Tim's Stormtrooper, which since this is a human form, I can scan it in an A pose, then after some cleanup, bring that into Mixamo. Once I upload it, I can use Mixamo's rigging to rig out this character for me. All I have to do is tell it where the chin, wrists, elbows, knees, and groin are, and away it goes. Once it's all done, it gives you a preview to make sure everything is all good, and now I can add any of the animations they have on the site. I'll go with this one, export, and add it in, and now I have a dancing stormtrooper in my scene. Or I can go further and try something not as humanoid like E.T. This doesn't work as well for obvious reasons, but it's still hilarious and could fully work with a few minor tweaks. But the idea of creating your own objects for your scenes that are made from real life objects is one that I love and allows you to push things toward realism since again, you're starting with a real object. Ian Hubert does this a ton and it is incredible. Definitely check out his channel to see how he uses scans to build out incredible worlds. And he's using Blender, which is free software. So regardless of what software you use, you can get great results like adding this skull prop to a rocky scene in Unreal Engine, which again, Unreal Engine is free. But I love technology, man. Each new thing opens up all kinds of doors to help us break down barriers and push our ideas further than we ever could. So give this a shot for yourself. I'll throw links to everything in the notes below along with more tutorials to dive in deeper. You can also share your scans through Polycam. We'll post some of ours and we'd love to see yours. So share those with us on all the social places. You'll find those below as well. If you're not subscribed, consider doing that and hit the bell so you're notified when we put up more content. And until next time, don't forget to write, shoot, and okay. repeat. I've been running, keep up, gunning, stop the fighting on your words. It's what you hear, not what you heard. I'ma hang on every verb.